Now, as lofty goals go, providing free, world-class education to anyone, anywhere, is right up there. That's exactly the goal of Khan's Academy. Well, the non-profit educational website reaches around 6 million students per month and teaches them online via an extensive library lesson video. Well, our reporter Saeed Algaskos met up with the website's founder, Salman Khan. Well, it's been a, a somewhat of an accidental journey. It was in 2004, you know, I was working as an analyst at a financial firm and I started tutoring my cousins remotely over the phone. And um, after a few months of doing that, I started writing some software for them to give them practice problems. That's the first thing that I called Khan Academy. And then a, a couple years later, to help me scale up uh, the lessons, a friend suggested, hey, why don't you make some lessons as videos and put them up on YouTube? I thought that it was a silly idea. I said, YouTube is for cats playing piano, not <laughs> serious mathematics. But I got over the idea that it wasn't my idea, and I decided to give it a shot. And before long, it became clear that people who were not my cousins were watching those videos. And so you fast forward to 2009. I set it up as a not-for-profit organization. Uh, at that time, we were reaching hundreds of thousands of users. Um, I had trouble focusing on my day job. Uh, so I quit and I started Khan Academy and we have a mission of a, a free world-class education for anyone anywhere. The seminar was really interesting. We were talking about integrating technology in today's world. What, what do you think are, is the significance of it? What we think about isn't technology is somehow replacing physical experience. It's more about how can technology empower physical experiences. So if students can get lectures and exercises at their own time and pace on something like Khan Academy, then the how can that free up the classroom to do even higher order tasks, Socratic dialogue, projects, make it an environment where students can do peer-to-peer -peer learning, where the teachers can get data from Khan Academy and then use that data to make a, a more personalized uh, experience for, for the students in the classroom. So in terms of technology now that we were talking about, what do you think is the initial step of sending, for example, your t bringing Khan Academy or education curriculum such as Khan Academy to places that are very remote? Yeah, I think that's an interesting question because obviously even to begin to use Khan Academy, people need access to devices and preferably need access to broadband. And, uh, you know, what's, happened, what's been happening so far is that other groups, governments, NGOs have been taking our content and they have been bringing it into the field. And they've been seeing fascinating results. And so we want to work with them to see how can we make the price point go down. And we are seeing this. You know, luckily this is riding on top of the, you know, Moore's Law, where every, every 18 months it's getting half as expensive. Uh, so, so my hope in five years, ten years, the cost of access is going to be literally pennies per day. And at that point, the content can follow the, tech, the, the physical technology and, we, and, and the internationalization, the localization, so that we can reach uh, people even in rural areas.